When I joined Toastmasters, I did it for one reason, to improve my public speaking, just like everybody else. But I was having a problem in that I didn't go very often, maybe once a month. And now that I think back on it, it was kind of like my gym membership, because, I mean, of course I want to get healthy, of course I want to lose weight. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want to feel good, look sexy? And as important as our health is, the moment that an important meeting comes up, or your workload becomes too much, or you're feeling tired, it's really easy to sweep the gym or Toastmasters off to the side. I remember I was going out for coffee with Mike Peach, our other guest, who was the president of our club at the time, and I'm trying to explain all this to him, and he says, Eugene, I'm sorry, but those are all excuses. It's not a question of your workload or how many hours in the day that we have or even your energy levels. It's a question of your heart and your commitment. I took his advice seriously and in the next couple of months, I started to take on more roles. I went on to more meetings and even became president of First Republic Toastmasters and I remember at the time when I did that, I kind of thought to myself, what did I get myself into? But what I didn't realize would happen was that it opened doors for me and it provided me new opportunities. First, I got a lot of practice in. I started flying through the CC and the CL, but now as president, it taught me leadership and accountability because when members couldn't make the meetings, someone got sick, someone's jaw was broken, I stepped in to fill in those roles because just like show business, the meeting's got to go on. Also, I did something that I never thought I was going to do, which was enter into a speech contest. Never said I was going to do it. Mike Peach used to come up to me and ask me, hey, we got this contest coming, do you want to participate? And I wasn't even, I didn't even make up an excuse. I said, no thanks. But now as president, I kind of felt like I had to lead by example. So sure, I'll jump into this speech contest. Let's see what happens. Well, what happened was I ended up winning the club contest, the area contest, the division contest, and then I took second place at the district contest. This was all unexpected, and when I remember what Mike told me, he said, you know, in the same way that if you wanna get healthy, you have to commit to going to the gym, and if you go to the gym, you can't just jump on the, or you can't just stand there. You have to jump on the treadmill, you have to get on that bike, and you have to get in front of the lectern when you're at Toastmasters. Over time, I started to build up my confidence and build up my skills, and this kind of had a trickle-down effect into my work life because I started running much more effective meetings that always started and ended on time. If I was called on to present, whether it was for analysts, for managers, for our executives, I treated every presentation like it was a speech contest. And you can be sure that I brought my A-game every time. During the year, we were, my team was invited to present at a social business conference in Las Vegas. And at the time, my family, my friends, they were calling me, asking me, are you nervous? There's gonna be so many people there, it's a really big stage. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that I wasn't. I wasn't nervous because ironically, two days before I arrived in Vegas to do this presentation, I was at the division contest with JJ doing my humorous speech when I had won that contest. So, so you see, it's one thing to go against a stage of 100, 200 people. It's another thing to be going up against area champions who are looking to mop the floor with you with their speeches. <laughs> so there was a lot of unexpected benefits, but one that I really want to highlight is all the relationships I was building in our club. I'm sure this is just like your club, but in our club, we have folks from accounting and finance, we have folks from IT, HR, digital channels, our anti-money laundering team. I mean, we have a really diverse group of people. And I really got to know these people from their icebreaker speeches, from the, from the good laughs that we had, from the table topics questions. And I really got to know these people over time. And this kind of culminated in this business meeting I was in one day, because sitting on the other side of the table was a fellow Toastmaster, and he was just barking at me about procedures I needed to follow, supporting documentation that I needed to have, needing to have a uh, need to mitigate risk. And if I didn't know him, I would have thought he was a complete jerk, <laughs> which is the truth, but I did know him. 
I knew him from Toastmasters. I knew personal things about him from his stories that he told me. I knew about his humor. I knew his strengths and weaknesses as a speaker. So I didn't take it personally. He, that's probably his work style, or maybe he was having a bad day, I don't know. The best part is that when we walked out of the meeting, he comes up to me and he's like, so I'll see you on Wednesday, Toastmasters. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. Where else do you get to make these kind of relationships with these people? I mean, we probably would have never crossed paths like that had it not been for Toastmasters. So as I close, you see it's easy to push Toastmasters aside in the same way that you do your gym. There's always going to be more time. There's, there's always next week. I'll focus on this next year. But that's just impossible. Right? We have our personal interests. We have our professional interests. And most people try to balance the two. You know, you do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. But I was talking to one of my executives the other day, and she gave me a piece of advice. She said, it's not about balancing all of these all at one time. It's all about setting priorities, right? So what's your priority? Now that I'm here, I encourage you guys to make Toastmasters your priority. In the same way that Wesley came up here and said, make volunteering your priority. Because if you do, if you commit, if you push yourself, you will unlock skills and talent that you never thought that you had. So if there's one thing that I want you guys to remember from this speech, I want you to remember this mantra. Build it up, keep it up, and when you guys get up in front of this lectern, don't forget to tear it up. Thank you.